zero. When you, so when the number, when the previous number is a new number, the next, the next number is zero. Okay, so we haven't seen a zero. zero. Okay, so we put a zero. Have we seen a zero before? Uh, yes, we saw it, we saw it like, we saw it one minute ago. In fact, let's actually note that down. Uh, so, um, we got, like, a step back here. That we have a... A zero. And so the next term is one. We, so, we saw zero one step, we seen a zero one step back, so the next term is one. Have we seen a one before? No, we haven't seen a one before, so we put a zero. Have we seen a zero before? We've seen it one, two steps back. So we put a uh, two, because we've seen it two steps back. Have we seen a two before? No, we put a zero. We've seen zero before? Yes, we saw it two steps ago. One step. Two steps. The next term is two. And we've seen two before. It was two steps ago. One. Two. So then that was two steps ago. So the next term is also two. Have we seen two before? Yes. We've seen it one step ago. So the next term is one. Now, have we seen it one before? Have we seen it one before? Oh yes, we've seen it one, two, three, four, five, six steps ago, and so the next number is actually six. <laughs> so, so it's like small for a while, zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero, two, two, one, and then suddenly six. <laughs> and, okay, next. Six? Now, um, okay, after... Afterwards, um, well, we haven't seen a six before, so we put a zero. Uh, have we seen a zero before? Uh, yes, in fact, we've seen it. One, two, three, four, five steps ago, so we put a five there, and we haven't seen a five before. And then we have a, actually, and then we actually put two. And so on. This is called von X sequence. Since I'm Dutch, I can pronounce it correctly. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, you have also, you've learned about it, by the way, from this guy on number file. Neil, Neil Sloan, who of OEIS fame, which, by the way, is the Cody Trey's favorite website in the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you have now plotted it in Wolfram. Right? Plotted in Wolfram. I just copied it down from a Python program that I have. And so you, you see some patterns also in so the So this Wolfram is plot. idle. Uh, and you can see. So, so, so let's unpack this. So we run a function called van Eck, which basically both adds the mixture to the sequence and also gives it back to me so I can read it. So... So uh, we have a, um, here a variable called next. The reason why I actually had to put an underscore underneath there 
is because next is actually um, a, a, a keyword in Python. So, you know, so, so next is zero. So, yeah. So we assume that it's a new number. I, this is just the length of the sequence, which we've done so far. And we've checked every single number up to that number okay. itself. Whether it is that number or not. So whether we've seen it before. And if we have seen it, then we set it to how far back that was. So, and then, and then and that of course, and now we got our next number, and then we add it to the sequence and and also just give it back to me. The sequence starts with a zero, as I just said, and then just a short number of terms right now. So we got zero zero one zero two zero two two one six zero five. And why did you have to copy this to Wolfram? Why couldn't you, from scratch, just? I Right, I, I, the I could, <laughs> but but I, uh, but but I just wanted to use like procedural programming. To, and, and I haven't figured out a way to uh, write this sequence using uh, functional programming yet. Uh, but okay, so I so I'm using procedural programming over here, and then as a standard, and then I'm using functional programming o over um, here as a standard. Just. This is the sequence, everybody. Okay, so then I just copy pasted the output into Wolfram, and and then I'll type that into a uh, list line plot function. So you can see these are the first, I think, twelve terms. These are, I think, the first one hundred and twelve terms. You see a pattern that it has like peaks and troughs, and then you have a few more terms over here. But it's in no way periodic. Uh, yeah, that's what I uh, wanted to do next. So you can see over there is now, um, uh, I think, uh, 1922. Yeah, 1922 terms here. And then I just set it going. I, I, yeah, literally, I just set it going and and then stopped it at some humanly random point. Uh, so this, so that's why this is quite a random, Ooh. random number here. <laughs> uh, four, fourteen thousand nine hundred and twelve. Yes. So that's that, that many terms of the sequence are plotted here, <laughs> and we have this pattern here. And this is interesting. That it goes down twice. It has a it has a pattern here. Uh, well, which is that it kind of grows like this. That's actually the only thing. That, yeah, we we know pretty much this about it. The sequence. It's aperiodic. No matter how how far you go, you always see a zero. And. And it keeps growing. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that, a pretty new that, sequence you told me. Yeah, right? it's a pretty new sequence. Uh, and um, the first person who analyzed it and uh, actually proved these only three things we know about it was Neil Sloan of OEIS fame. Uh, <laughs> and that's an online library, encyclopedia. Yeah. Of sequences. Uh, yeah. Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. That's what it stands for. Um, Great. Simon's Wolfram uh, plot will be online. We'll link uh, in the yeah, description. Yeah. I just wanted to do one thing before I go. I wanted to prove those... Th uh, show, show you new, new slow's proof of... Um, uh, that proves all of the three things we know all at once. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm gonna So
So, um, of course, it starts with a contra- uh, it starts with a proof by contradiction. So if we sort of graph it, it looks something like this. <laughs> That's not a graph, because, yeah. Anyway. Say this number is the peak of the sequence. It it never goes above this line. There's there's this is the biggest number that ever appears in the sequence. I'm gonna call M. This Now this M if that's the largest number, then then that means that the most, the least reach since you, you possibly have to look back to find any number is that M. So, the most reach, because of its definition, because of the sequence, definition, which means that if you have a chunk like this of length m, so, so, well, we have m numbers, or maybe m plus one, uh, in the range 1 through m. And then, of course, uh, there are only a finite number of those chunks that could appear, uh, which are m to the power of m plus 1. There are only that many possible chunks that, that you could have. But then, and so one of them must repeat. And so then it would be periodic. I'm gonna show you that that can't happen now. Um, so uh, we have our sequence. And then it just keeps going. Exactly the same pattern. This this is if it were periodic. Yeah, if it were periodic. So, uh, I'm gonna call this, um, first, uh, number in each period X, and the last number in each, each period I'm gonna call Z. And so, X here, and then Z here, X here, and then Z here, X here, and then Z here, X here, and then Z here. And so on. It's just the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> right time. Let's look at the second period here. In what in each of the periods, um, suppose there's more than one copy of Z. Let's say this is the first one. So that's also Z. Then we're gonna have the next term in this uh, sequence. That's going to be, um, uh, I'm searching for a different color. Um, Neva has them over there. Ten. Yeah, I know, but I can, I think I can find one over here as well. Yes, there. So I got a red pen here now. So let's call the term after this one A. Not so beautiful, but uh, pen. But anyway, that because of the definition of the sequence Z, the first copy of Z the no the the most recent copy of z before the z has to be a steps back 
right? Yes. Because of the, the definition of the sequence. But that's actually this last one over here, if you think about it, because then... Yeah, so there must be a Z before here. So this A must not be zero. Yeah. The, the, that's the most recent Z, right? Because we assume this was the first copy. Now let's move to the first period, so which has the same Z and A. Now this important thing is but that... But then A would be zero here. That A is not zero, right? Because... But it the, should be, because the first time we see Z... Is here, yes. There we go, that's a contradiction. By the way, uh, I don't think this proof is complete yet, by the way, because... Uh, this is the proof that Neil Sloan gave. I don't think this is the proof is complete yet, because then it only looks at the case where there are more than one copy of Z in each of the period. Let's say that, that if, if there's only one copy of Z in each period... Well, then actually the same proof applies... Oh, well, okay, so let's let's look at the case where there is only one copy of Z. I'm not going to write that squarely line down, but anyway. The same proof applies because then the first copy of Z is just here. The A is now, well, we also have an A, but it's just in the next period. So if we put the A in the... So A is actually X. There we go. So the last copy of Z is then X steps back. That this, and so, but th there's a z over here, so x must not be zero. But here, x must be zero because this is the only copy of z in there. And so the same proof applies there. Um. So, um. So I got this um proof from number file. Um. As far as I know, that's this proof is by Neil Sloan. And, yeah, it proves all of these three things that we know about it at once. Uh, because, well, it proves that it's aperiodic because we, because we, because uh, we just proved that if it's periodic, we get a contradiction. There is no biggest number that appears in this sequence. So, that does not mean that every number appears that we don't know. So, so there's no biggest number in the sequence. Or that it keeps growing, that, that's actually the same thing. And then you can extend that proof as a little bit, just... Because, because the definition of the sequence, there, we just... How, how, however far you go in the sequence, you'll always find a zero after that point. So... There are infinitely many zeros in this sequence, basically. The links are in the description. Uh, by the way, okay, so, um, so, uh, so, yeah, links are in the description and somewhere in here in the end screen, and, um, uh, I, yeah, so in this video, I've completed the proof from number file. That it's period, aperiodic.